Welcome back, it's Paul Maglev here, and looks like I've overlooked something. That's right, hold on a sec. Looks like there's been a new patch, and I didn't get the chance to actually take a look at it, but there really wasn't much that was changed, really, in terms of what the game can... Ah. What the game has to offer, but it does have some uh, changes and bug fixes before the next patch which allegedly is supposed to come out in September. I should not type September. But I, I think it was supposed to be around this time of year or whatever. Uh, the new patch, 1.5, where the uh, Japanese campaign would be available to the public. And I didn't think this was going to be much of a big deal, uh, but I thought I should make another video for this patch anyway. And I feel good about this patch because I've managed to get 90% of all the achievements in this game. I'm surprised that there is only one or two, actually no, three achievements that I have yet to get. And they are the uh, Japanese campaign achievements, the Tycoon for 60 t stamps, which requires you to complete the Japanese campaign, which obviously is not public access right now. And the other one, it's no coincidence, where I go bankrupt a hundred times. Now, it's really difficult to get because, obviously, it's hard to go bankrupt so many times. And granted, I got all the other achievements, uh, like sabotage, blow up a hundred trains, mega railroad, complete a, r a level with 300 tractiles, which is really difficult. And I even got away with juggler where I completed a level with 10 simultaneously running trains. And I admit, that was not very easy to do, and I wasn't able to record any proof of it. Shucks. But, I feel good because it's going to come out soon. Here's an image that I didn't see in the Steam uh, page for this game, but it looks really awesome. It's a little Shinkansen. And I feel good because I feel like I'm kind of the king when it comes to uh, Train Valley. Oh, fuck. I'm number three. Anyway, welcome back, folks. It's Paul Maglev here, and today I've got a little something more serious to talk about. Uh, I've been playing this game for the longest time, since its earliest alpha, as far as I can tell. And I like to take things easy. I've come a long way, and so has this game. And I feel very proud to have been a part of this process of uh, the game developing and experiencing it all the way through because it's been a real journey. One of the few journeys in my life where I actually cared about the journey itself instead of the destination. And I thought it was kind of strange how a game that was so simple in theory became such a phenomenon overnight it seems. I don't have enough cash to actually build this piece of track. Okay, there we go. So, I thought about it, and I was a little surprised that, uh, I wasn't the first search result in, uh, Train Valley for, uh, YouTube in the search engine. The reason being, I had been the only person who ever uploaded anything on Train Valley ever at one point in time. And as a result of that, I thought that I'd be able to be sort of the ruler of this domain and it would be my own personal space. But now I know that other people have played this game as well, and not only have they played this game well, they have also gotten uh, much more page views than I did, and that kind of makes me sad. And I'm not entirely sure why that makes me sad or disheartened, because I felt like... I don't know, when you feel like some... When you feel like you've gotten to be one of the first few people to explore something, you feel like a pioneer. A real innovator, a maverick, a rogue, uh, any sort of other synonym to describe what I'm trying to say. But once everybody else kind of comes along and kind of takes it over, you kind of feel a little disheartened, and that is what I'm feeling right now. And I'm not sure 
how else to describe it, really. Because I'm thankful that this game has become so popular so quickly. But on the other hand, I feel like I should have been uh, given a little bit more credence because I had emotionally invested so much into this game and published so much stuff related to this game. In fact, it's even one of my most successful, uh, one of my most successful series is on my channel, which, mind you, doesn't do a lot for me, but, uh, with the page views and the, uh, subscriber counts I got as a result of doing this series, I'm pretty sure it would be an astounding number, somewhere on the order of over 300%. When I started this series, I had like only three to five subscribers, and now I have 27. Actually, that's not 300% increase, is it? But it's some obnoxious number, and to me that's a big deal, but I feel like I'm kind of being overshadowed and eclipsed by everybody else around me because they have a larger audience retention or subscriber base. And I really can't help it because, well, it's not, it's not really my fault that uh, some people get favored over others in terms of viewership. Really? At least I suspect. It's really all a matter of favoritism and a really complicated algorithm that uh, YouTube runs on, which follows the circular logic that something that has a lot of page views deserves to be watched more, and therefore should have more page views, and an endless information cascade, as they call it. And that kind of makes it kind of interesting, but it also creates this massive disparity where a lot of people try to put content online that just winds up never getting watched. And when I realized that I wasn't in the... Uh, it wasn't the first search results. I realized that I was uh, experiencing the less romantic side of YouTube, and I think I need to just accept the fact that when it becomes, uh, I'm sorry, when it comes to being successful at YouTube, oh dear, I think I just sent a train the wrong way. But when it comes to being successful on YouTube, or really anything for that matter in life. It not only takes practice, but it also takes an incredible amount of determination and sheer luck, because everything that was ever successful in the history of forever only got to have the success and aspirations that it did come true because of a sheer accident. Some of the greatest political leaders of our world probably wouldn't have been the greatest political le leaders of our world if it hadn't been for a few key instances in their life where they were given an opportunity that nobody else had and made the most of it. And granted, a lot of bad people have also done the same thing, but that's beside the point. The point is, when it comes to success in history, it really is as they called it an Econ 1B, an accident of history. And I realize now that my statistical likelihood of actually being able to do this for a living is about as likely as winning the lottery, which is about as likely as getting struck by lightning 17 times, which is to say it will never happen. Or at least that's a nice way of putting it. I almost posted a rant about this a while back. I kind of felt like I was insignificant because of all the effort I had put in that wound up just not getting any sort of uh, tangible results. But really, maybe I was overlooking something much more important. I was overlooking the fact that what really matters is that I'm supposed to enjoy myself and look at things that make me happy and publish when I feel like it. That I don't have to appeal to a certain base. Though granted, I have been known to be a, a the kind of person that tries to blend in, I guess. And I realize this map design is not ideal for connecting all the stations. 
But that's okay. I guess that works. You see, you have to make do with what you've got in life, and whatever that is, you have to accept it. Now, I really, really, really wanted to be successful at this because, I don't know, uh, some people are really, really successful at uh, posting game footage online, and it basically felt like a job where every day of your life you would basically be uh, living, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that I wanted a job where I loved what I did, and they say when you love to do what you do for work, you'll never, uh, you'll never work a day in your life, or something like that. And I thought I was gonna be one of those people that would find something I was passionate about, and fully commit myself to it in such a way that it benefited myself as well as society, but obviously I was being a little bit too optimistic. And now I'll have to realistically kind of reassess what everything is about and what the original plans of fate really are. And these trains are getting really long really fast. Everything's all fine and dandy here. But you get the idea. I got myself way in over my head and I should have thought about this a lot better. Or a lot more realistically. I feel like I want to be ambitious and build this, but I can't because that city's in the way. It's more of a shanty town really here. But it's still cost $100,000 to deconstruct. Wait, I thought that was a blue train. Oh, my mistake. It's okay, it's no big deal. Anyway, the real reason that I didn't post the rants was, well, I didn't think... Uh, it was very palatable, and upon being asked about it, or inquiring about it, I should say, I was not in a position to, uh, ideally, uh, publish it. Oh, that's one of the glitches that's in this patch for some reason. I think it was in the previous patches, but this time around it's a little bit different. And by a little bit different, I mean, uh... It's a different patch, but it's the same issue. I'm not entirely sure why it hasn't gotten fixed, but a lot of other things have been fixed, which is good. We got a little phantom explosion there. Not entirely sure why. I thought I heard something. I could be mistaken. Ghost trains! That's the other thing in this patch. The locomotives are invisible and it's cool! It's like a ghost train! It's a nice... I, it's, to me it's kind of like a feature. Uh, at least for me, but... For you it might not be, and I'm pretty sure they'll get that fixed in the next patch if... Uh, Flatham comes and sees this. Which I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't because I've got like one of the largest upload rates for this game on Steam. You know what, I'm gonna back this up. More ghost trains! I think everything's glitching out. Let's slow down. It's 
sounds like a Michael Bay film! I really wanted to send a train over here, but it looks like that's not gonna work. So we're just gonna have to work our way around it then. I can't believe I've flummoxed this up. I think another train just jammed somewhere over here. Oh, there goes another. Another one bites the dust. Wow, I've never really actually seen this glitch before at this level of magnitude. Usually it doesn't make such a loud sound when it glitches out like that, but it's still really funny. And I'm hoping that this level doesn't actually end in a bad way, because I know I can actually win this level if I try hard enough. Granted, I've already done it before, but I find this level is probably the most challenging in the game. At least for me it is. I'm not sure what it's like for you. If you've played this game, that is. Oh, I sent a train in the wrong direction again. I have to stop this train. No, go back, go back, go back! Ah, shucks. Still can't back up. Will you back up now? I think this train is going to come out and crash into this one. There we go. Now I don't have to deal with it. So that's an improvement. And there shouldn't be any more new trains coming out. Or at least spawning in the stations, I should say. It keeps stacking up. It's kind of strange. I feel like I haven't even made this infrastructure very efficiently, but it does the job. It certainly does the job. All I have to do is just make sure this train passes through, and it will. And I forgot to switch the tracks. Shoot. And I can't switch it around, so... That's gonna be a little awkward. Is there anything else I can do? Let's see, send this train here, send this train... Here. Stop this train here. Oh man, there's so many trains heading to this city. It must be a very popular place. Either that or all the other places are very, very bad. I can never really tell. But hopefully we should be able to speed things up now that things have wound down. train in its tracks. Get this train through, hopefully. Multiply by four. And that should do it. But anyway, I think the point of what I'm trying to say in this video is, ultimately, although it's... Uh, the series has been very successful for me. I realized that it has been much more successful for others. Granted, they had previous successes that were precedent to that, but... I still feel it would be nice if YouTube was set up in such a way that... Uh, the little guy, per se, could actually get some more page views in edgewise. Because the only thing you can see nowadays when you look at a video in YouTube on the little sidebar with all the suggested videos and stuff. 
it only to it only tells you that it's either recommended by YouTube or it tells you that there's a lot of page views. It doesn't tell you how many likes it has, how many shares. It doesn't tell you what the quality of the video is really. And that's something I missed from the original YouTube because in the original YouTube, you would rate something on a five-star basis. If something was really, really good, it had five stars. And it had a large page view rating to substantiate the claim because it has a large sample size. But now that's no longer the case, and now all you have is just a large sample size without an understanding of whether or not people really like the video or just love to hate it. And... It prioritizes some videos over others based on their previous success or subscriber base. And I feel like that gives an unfair advantage. I think there needs to be some sort of equalizer out there so that everyone has an equal opportunity of being successful on YouTube back like it used to be in the day. But I don't know, maybe I just don't know how the economics of it works. But if somebody is out there, and they're listening to me, and I know that my close friends will do that, of course, but if there's somebody out there that I don't know who's watching this and has some sort of connection uh, over to YouTube, let them know uh, how I feel. Because it's not something that I alone feel. It's something that a lot of people have experienced, and they realize that it's not fair, and that kind of stuff. And I think that's gonna be pretty much it. I don't know why I got into this level, but I just felt like it. And I guess I'm going to play it all the way through, but I think I've spent enough time here, so I guess I'll wrap up the video while I finish this level. I'll see you all next time, and until then, take it easy, stand tall, and remember to stay awesome. And also stay true to yourself. Oh, one more thing. I just remembered that I needed to remind myself or write it down somewhere. But recording it on video is fine. But I need to remind myself that I need to be my own hero sometimes. Because sometimes there isn't going to be someone out there who's going to save me for me. Sometimes I have to go out and save myself. So that was the other thing I wanted to mention. But stand strong, everybody, because we are all in this together, and I will see you all next time. Take care, everyone.